Dr. Ray Middleton. I write and deliver training and I've just finished writing some training on Jay Levy's pre-treatment approach. He's just brought out this excellent workbook which is available from his website jslevy.com. Here's an example of one of the episodes from the training. If you'd like to find out more about the training I can offer either live or online just drop me an email. Dr. Ray Middleton, I write and deliver training, developing knowledge and skillful ways of working with people with complex combinations of needs around housing, mental and physical health, substance misuse and other needs. I have direct experience of working in this sector for over 20 years and I also draw on current thinking and research such as the ACEs or Adverse Childhood Experiences Research, which shows that difficulties around homelessness, mental health and addiction are often connected with a history of trauma and adversity. So it does help to take a trauma-informed approach to this work. In this training, I'm going to introduce and explain a very well thought out and structured way of approaching this kind of work, an approach called the pre-treatment approach. This has been developed by a friend of mine, Jay Levy, in the USA. Jay's just published an interactive workbook on pre-treatment called Pre-Treatment in Action, Interactive Exploration from Homelessness to Housing Stabilisation. I would thoroughly recommend getting a copy of this for staff to work through and discuss to embed the knowledge and skills contained in this excellent approach. Discounts are available for larger orders of the workbook from Jay's website, jslevy.com. And if you're interested in the workbook, you can input the discount code word help homeless, all one word, for a discount. So pre-treatment, it bases itself around trying to connect and build up relationships with people around whatever needs people present with initially. These are skills for working with people who may be some distance from mainstream services. Those folk who tend not to be highly motivated. So it's an especially helpful set of tools for working with people who are less likely to be raising their hand and asking for help. People who are often thought of as pre-contemplative, if you've heard of that phrase. People with complex trauma histories who are not in mainstream services have often experienced multiple disadvantage and system failure. This is where services designed to help people with physical and mental health or substance misuse or other needs have failed to engage effectively with them for a variety of reasons. Often services do not meet people where they're at, but they can have a, a treatment bias which excludes some people until they've sorted out one or more of their difficulties before they can be accepted into their service. For example, a very common one, asking someone to sort out their addiction problem before they can be accepted into a mental health service. And this creates a big gap in the system, which people tend to fall through. This is where pretreatment can bridge this gap by engaging with folk where they're at, with what they present with initially, then using the trusting relationship formed through engaging with people. The idea is to bridge people into community resources and services that may help them on their journey through life. Jay Levy has been doing this for over 30 years, working with people without a home in the USA. He's helpfully drawn on his experiences and formed them into an approach which he calls pre-treatment. The complexity of problems faced by people with multiple needs often provoke strong thoughts and feelings in me. I often feel confusion or helplessness when I get alongside them. If I'm honest, I can feel overwhelmed at times and not be sure where to start offering help. The feeling stirred up in me may well reflect how the person I'm trying to help also feels, that kind of sense of powerlessness or uh, confusion or feeling overwhelmed because we pick up the emotions and thoughts of people we get alongside. That's just where this pre-treatment model can help. It's based on five principles of care. These principles can provide direction to our work in the middle of the complexity and confusion. This approach promotes quality person-centered care without limiting creativity in how to do the work. This approach focuses our attention on building a quality, trusting relationship between the worker offering something helpful and the person needing help. Out of this relationship, meaningful goals are identified and then barriers to achieving these goals are discussed and thought about and ways to overcome them are explored. 
It is a client-centered, strengths-based approach that emphasizes building hope and motivation towards change. One of the priorities of this approach is to increase safety, whilst at the same time promoting and enabling a transition into a community service or community resources that may be helpful to that person. Resources we might help people transition into include peer support groups, housing services or housing, substance misuse or mental health services, faith-based groups or voluntary work or employment services or actually into employment. There's all sorts of stuff in the community we might want to help someone transition into to create that social network of support around them. Any useful community resource. So the five principles of care pre-treatment is organised around are relationship formation, where connection and communication between the worker and the client is established. Trust and respect for the client's autonomy is promoted through different stages of engagement. And we'll talk about that in a little while, go into a bit more depth about it. The aim at this stage and in this, in, in this initial relationship forming is to form client-centred relationships that are goal-driven, that we're, we're, we're agreeing some goals. The second principle is called common language construction. Here we start by listening to understand and connect with a person's personal narrative and their words and ideas and values in an effort to develop effective communication. Potentially helpful community resources or new ideas may be reinterpreted and reframed in a language that makes sense to the client in an attempt to create and bridge someone into these community resources. So the language may involve bridging someone into another language and we'll explore that in a bit more depth. The third principle is called ecological considerations. Here we think about the person in their context or environment, like looking through a social lens. The worker supports the process of transition and adapting to finding a new balance within a new environment of some kind. And a new environment might be uh, new ideas, might include new people, it might include housing, new housing. It could involve new resources and ser it could be a service that you're transitioning, tra transitioning into. There's lots of things we might transition into and it might involve ideas and people and relationships as well as physical things like housing. The fourth principle of care is to promote safety. Here the worker applies crisis intervention and harm reduction strategies to reduce risk increase safety, promote stability, and embrace the opportunities that crises can bring along for opportunities to change. And the fifth principle of care is to facilitate change. Here the worker makes use of the stages of change model and motivational interviewing techniques to facilitate positive change. The pre-treatment approach also integrates Jay's 10 guidelines for assertive outreach counselling. These are to meet people we want to support both literally and in terms of the language they use where they're at. We want to prioritise the relationship as the most important thing because we want to promote trust and respecting people's autonomy. Without the relationship we can do very little. We want to develop a common language of shared words, ideas and values to build on. We want to be goal centred by joining with the person in setting some goals that resonate well in their world, not just the goals that we as workers want to drive. We want to listen to and co-produce some shared goals that are meaningful and resonate in their world. We want to mutually define or characterise the particular difficulties or barriers that might pre be preventing someone achieving these goals. And then we want to jointly develop strategies or plans to overcome these barriers and progress to the next steps. Carefully supporting transitions into new ideas and new relationships, environments. We want to bridge people between the, per we want to use that language to bridge them into this new environment whilst promoting safety, using the harm reduction strategies and crisis intervention approaches. We want to not forget though that crises can be this opportunity to promote positive change. It's vitally important to understand the person's self narrative We've all got a personal story, so we need to understand our own and the persons we're working with, because then it will resonate more with our world and we understand, understand the meaning and purpose and their story. Jay encourages us to respect the process of change, 
by understanding its stages and the relevant interventions that we might use at each stage. And we're going to explain and explore this in more depth in this training. This pre-treatment approach has these five principles I've just outlined. And in the next film, I'll explain and explore in more depth the first principle of care, which is relationship formation. If you'd like to find out a bit more about the online or live training I can offer, just drop me an email. And if you'd like to get Jay's workbook, go to his website, jslevy.com, and you can get it there. Mm -hmm.